It's a high chaos ball. A wobbler. Oh, oh Reynolds. Favoured by the bounce. Oh, he's going to turn it round the body. And he's got enough on it. Hi everybody, welcome to Before the Bounce. We have got a lot to get through. Obviously the Festival of Footy, so there's a fair bit to talk about. Collingwood having kicked over 60 points in the last five games. Where are the Crows fans? In fact, where are the Crows? That's probably a better question. Did the Melbourne president, Glenn Bartlett, overstep the line with his comments about the players and the coach? The Brighton Bombers take another big step, knocking off St Peter's to be clear ladder leaders, no doubt about that. Jade Sheedy has done a great job with the Eagles. They, in his first year as coach, sitting nicely on top of the SANFL ladder. As I welcome the McGarry medalist, super player for Essendon and Port Adelaide, Greg Anson. Ando, how are you? Not too bad, I just noticed you didn't say the Crows. Is that, is that like a dirty word in the moment? Is well, that? mate, I can put you in there if you like, mate, with the Crows as well. I wanted to show that you had some loyalty and oh, some right. common sense. Let's talk about the Crows. I see you yeah. bring it up. Like, I, I, I want to put this to you, and I, I'm trying to defend the Crows a little bit through this, but they had a really good showing against Essendon, and, and yeah. people started to get a bit excited. Then, of course, North Melbourne come to town and, and rolled them by a big they margin. Did, big margin. Now, you've been a part of these before, and it doesn't happen all that often in, be it basketball, be it yeah. footy, be it netball or whatever, but there's a moment when suddenly a whole lot of, and I call it raw emotion, not the coach getting in front of the group and getting them up and about, so I'm saying, go back to the time where we saw Teddy Whitten go around the Oval, state of origin, and we have Neil Curley come in and say to Cornsey after the, before the game starts, we haven't got a chance. Mm -hmm. It's so emotive in there with Teddy getting to the players yep. that they are over the top. Now, we have Majak Dor coming back after 700 plus days yeah. to play for North Melbourne, and the players absolutely love him. Well, it was a mental uh, health so issue. So is there a big, massive lift in that, though? And it's not the one you can get from coaches, and they are rare. I, I agree with what you're saying is I perfect. suspect that the Crows got a tsunami that was building on yep. the back of Majak Dor coming into play, yep. and then they were down some key players. Yep. And I, again... I know we want them to win, and it sounds like an excuse, but you've seen it too. Yeah. That might happen once in a decade. Yeah. I agree with what you're saying. I mean, you look at the uh, 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 Magic Doors, and now, you know, he's fallen uh, over a bridge, yep. you know, uh, mental health issues, apparently. Yep. You know, you probably as a teammate feel like, perhaps I could have done more, I didn't realise, I didn't see it. Good point. The club is saying that, the players are saying it. Now, all of a sudden, he's back playing. Now, that's inspirational. That oh. is inspirational. Also for the fact that, you know what, I probably felt like I let you down, you know, That's 700 and odd days ago. Yeah, yeah. And to see you on the train track and to see you come back, back in the AFL league side, wow, this I'm is going to let, oh, you, down, let you down, not one yeah. bit. on. So it's the whole culture of that North Melbourne Footy Club coming together. For something they yep. probably felt, we might have let him down. Yeah. And uh, they didn't let him down at all on the weekend. No. And you know, raw emotion is a very, very powerful <sighs> tool when it comes to. Uh, and you can only get it once. You only get it once. You won't get it next year, no. and you won't get it next week. No. And it'll be interesting to see North Melbourne whether they fall off the perch because of that raw emotion. Yeah. But again, you know, people will say, "Oh, well, you've got to have emotion when you play." And they put, we all play with emotion. Yeah. But this one's raw. That was and, raw. And your point is yeah. that they, they play above themselves for that. It's a really good point you make. They let him down. They didn't want to let him down again. I want to ask you about Collingwood, mate. Mm. Having kicked over 60 points in five games. So a lot of, probably a lot of clubs like that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I look at the, you know, the game between uh, Port yep. and, and, uh, and the Bulldogs. I think there were six goals uh, kicked up to, up to half time. I think it's a pretty average product we're putting out into the marketplace. Yep. I, I, I think that, you know, the Ruckman taps it down, player gets a ball, slams it on the boots, goes down, contests the mark, goes to ground, eight players jump on top of each other, umpire throws it up, taps it down, player gets the ball, slams it on his boot, go up to a, co a contest, comes down, and there's another five or six, seven players stacks on the mill, and it's just so defensive. The coaches do not want to get a goal kicked against them. Yeah, um, that makes sense. And, you know, you can probably see that, uh, you know, there's... Uh, no, there's not a lot of big scores anymore, so don't. It's just not Collingwood. Yeah, you know. I there's mean, we know yeah, right. the goal he's not playing at the moment, and and uh, I think the last time he played, what three or four weeks ago, he kicked five, and they still didn't kick sixty points. So you know, what about that there? So you got your main full forward, he kicks five, they still don't kick sixty points. So it's uh, it's it's a really interesting um, uh, statistic, but it's a I think it's out there for a lot of clubs, and I think the AFL needs to to make a bit of a change. You know, I think that the, the the women can see, handle sixteen, um, you know, sixteen players on the field. We've just got to somehow break this up. We've got to break up this back line, and the only way we can do it, don't mess around with the rules anymore. Yeah, let's take please. let's take the wingers out. Yeah. 
Um, so all of a sudden that the wingers just don't become half-backs like they play at the moment. Yep. You know. right. Gee, mate, you're making sense tonight. I'm not sure. Oh, There's gee. two in a row for Rando <laughs> right, making sense. All right. Right. <laughs> all right, I want to ask you about Melbourne's president, Glenn Bartlett, making the comments he made towards the Melbourne players uh, on, on their games, on their performance, uh, and things about the jumper. Where does that sit with you? Well, it's, a tough, one for the, look, it's a tough one for the Crows again. Yep. Because, you know, like at the, uh, at the end of the day, the, the, you know, the, the next game, you know, the Crows yeah, are playing the player Melbourne, Melbourne. Yep. who's, the, 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 you know, the chairman's just thrown at that good one. Yep. And the players are going to say, well, you know what? It's not just the coach guys. Yep. It's us as well. And as a, as a playing group, we've got to come together and we've got to create that spark. And guess what? It's probably going against the Crows again this week. And Is it a bad thing, though, for the president to come out and say they embarrassed the jumper, he's put Goody in the firing line? I mean, if I'm a player and I'm looking at moving somewhere at the end of the year, I look at that and go... Gee, that looks unstable. Which is football that today, looks, isn't it? It is looks football un, today. That looks unstable for me. I don't know if yeah. I want to go to a club where the president's firing shots at the team. I, just doesn't look stable. Well, it's, probably, it's, it's, it's new territory. I'm not saying what he said was right or yeah. wrong. I just don't think that the president should be saying those things. Players move very, very, very easily now. Yep. You know, yes, the year, you know, the Neil Curlidge, your Foss Williams, you know, as a, as a coach uh, or, or when they took up, you know, administration roles, they just attacked, yep. you know, and, and that's what that's that's uh, that's what footy was in those days. You're at that club and you're there for a long time. You want to be there as a life member of 10 years, you know. Um, but it's interesting to see that, you know, the, the uh, Glenn Bartlett say that. Uh, well, in your time, let me ask you in your time, with the Crows, with Port Adelaide, and with Essendon, did a president ever come out and say that you embarrassed the uniform? Did he ever come out and say something where the playing group thought, not necessarily, but they thought he's a bit out of line, he shouldn't have said it? I know Robert uh, Shaw did. He, he, yep. I think he made us apologise to a group of supporters after the game. We went to this corporate area and he said on behalf of all the players, you know, we, we were really embarrassed of how we played, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, and of course, saying that to media was, you know, it, it uh, you had really mixed emotion. And, and that's what was really focused for the whole next week where, you know, the media grabs something, they just run with it, you know. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I think at the end of the day, you know, because of that world we live in now, you know, the bubble of football, yeah. perhaps it's best to keep everything in closed doors and work it out yourselves, you know, within your group. I mean, but what, what kind of fans wouldn't know that you felt embarrassed about this? Oh. Wouldn't know that you felt bad about it. I think there's two things there. I think you're disrespecting the opposition that yep. played really well. They were sensational. And I, and I think you're they. also disrespecting the group that was on the ground because I don't know any player that doesn't go out to compete. And sometimes you can compete and it looks like you're not mm. playing well, but they're just having a game where you can't get them. They're having the a, couple, they having a tough own. year again, yeah. Melbourne. You yeah. know, after losing that prelim uh, last year, I think they uh, they they finished fifteenth. Only had the five wins at the moment. They've had three. Um, it was a really insipid performance. Yeah. Um, but but they uh, know that. But the they know that. And the coaches know Perhaps that. Perhaps the chairman comes in, gives them a rev up behind the closed doors. Don't really know to go to the media, and he certainly had mixed emotion from some of the some of the Melbourne greats yeah. of saying, "Well, yet yeah, the players deserve it." You know, you know, Goody is is in charge, or he's he's part of all that. But you've had other legends of uh, Melbourne saying, "Hey, we need to keep this, you know, yeah. closed doors um, because uh, you know it's our club. You know, it's it's uh, you know it's what we're about as a as a football team, and it, we leaked a lot of things, yeah. and, so, and that's probably not good I, enough." I'm a bit with you, and I, again, I can see where he's coming from, but I, I think he was out of line. Now yeah. I take the next step and I go, I'm a major sponsor of your footy club, and suddenly the team's not playing all that well, and now I see the president having a crack. I start going, this mm -hmm. looks a bit unstable to me. This, I don't know if I can hold on here much longer. You know what? It's a really tough year. It's, yeah. it's COVID-19. That's, that's what our world it's is unique. at the moment. We're, we're lucky to be playing football, I agree. firstly. Yep. Now for him to say, Glenn, uh, Glenn uh, Bartlett to say, you know what? I could be after you, Goody. Hmm. You don't perform. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sack you. And with that, we pay you out the 1.5 million dollars, and we replace you with someone else, and they get their payment. So basically, the club's gonna, you know, lose 1.5 million dollars if that, if yep. that's the case. People are on their hands and knees at the moment with this COVID-19. <laughs> oh, There's a half a million people about to lose their job in Victoria, yep. and he's about to say, you know what? No, I'm gonna throw and burn 1.5 million dollars. Um, I don't think it's the right time to, be, to do that situation. I agree with you. And it's we, not going to happen anyway. The we, AFL won't let it happen. They don't have the money. This is a tough year. Oh, so if we focus on Goodwin, on that mm. very thing, you're the same people that signed him two years ago because you thought he was a great coach. Exactly. So, so your whole premise yeah. on being a good coach is based on wins and losses. And losses, yeah. Not very, yeah. again, 
not a stable environment. It's not a stable environment. All right, quickly, yeah, mate. Jade, that's good. Uh, Jade, she's doing a great job with the Eagles. They sit on top of the ladder. And How nice playing. is that? First, First year. year in. Let's have a go at it. See what I'm like. Oh, actually, uh, Phil and Greg, I'm on top of the table. <laughs> so he's doing great. And I'm, I want to say, I went to uh, Glenelg Sturt on the weekend. Just watched a half. Just w- yep. walked and, and uh, showed my ticket. Got in and and fantastic game, Phil. Like, you know, I was pretty close to the uh, the fence line, and yep. oh, I was thinking. Oh, I don't want to be out there. There was, just bo- no, no, there was bone crunches. I was going, oh, this is- these, these guys are just Go suicidal how they were going. Yep. I've got to take my hat off to the Glenn Footy Club. They quite often mention about COVID-19 uh, and, and uh, social distancing yep. over the loudspeaker. Well done. Had a big crowd. They were, it was a fantastic crowd, but a big crowd in the, in the, in the respect of of COVID-19, and I, and I thought they'd done a great job. All right, so I wanna, we've got a couple of things when we get to the close of the show. I want to talk about the Southern Footy League. They had an incident with Flagstaff Hill of Port mm. with uh, some Indigenous uh, racist comments yeah. made, and congratulate a couple of people on how they handled it, and it's disappointing the way it went on. We need to get to a break. Yeah. Stay with us. We are into the first quarter, getting into the second end on the move. And welcome back to Before the Bounce. I'm taking over, General. You, you know, I, I love this segment because it's there's no show without Ando. You know, it's a show about nothing. No show without Ando. <laughs> we were starting off, we are looking sensible, but here we go. Righto. <laughs> now, Giddy just, up. <laughs> <laughs> so just call me Mr. Vandalay, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> the latex man. Yeah, the latex man, I love it, I love it. Now, your phone rings, it's Mark Rusciuto. Yep. Right. He wants you to fix the crows. There's no untouchables. There's no pushback from you know, the higher authorities. You've got to fix it. How do you go about it? I mean, it's a, it's a huge ask. It's a huge question, actually. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, look, I reckon there's a couple of things. We understand we don't know the inner, inner sanctum and how mm. it works. So we're, we're sitting on the outside trying to pretend that we know. Yeah. So for me, the first thing is I'm going, I'm going to bring in some expert consultants from areas that can help me look at the area that I think needs cleaning up. Yep. Or what's wrong with it. So as opposed to me being the hire and fire and slasher and burner. So for instance, Justin Reed, we think the recruiting has been off the boil. Mm-hmm. Now we've heard them say, uh, oh, we, we look three years ahead. All the clubs yeah. look three years ahead with their recruiting. So we say that's fair enough. My question would be right now, well then, why are we where we are now? Mm-hmm. If that's we were it. three years ahead, exactly. then, yeah, then we've yeah. made a mistake. Why are we losing the players that are... And we've, we've had these discussions. Dangerfield, for example, was always going home. Yep. But why is Charlie Cameron gone? Did we make a mistake with Hugh Greenwood? Yep. The, money, the money that we're hearing on players mm. that are leaving, is it factual or is it speculation? Mm. I want to know about that, and then I want to make a decision on have we got the right well, people in that area? You've got McGovern who yep. left, Lever who left. It's some real talent that yes. left because of perhaps money. Yep. Um, and we don't know, so we, we need don't to really know. know. Why. We shouldn't say, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we need to know why. Hugh Greenwood would be the one I would, I would want some answers on Greenwood. Yeah, you know, I can understand Charlie wanting to get back to Queensland, but Hugh Greenwood, you know, my understanding is he wanted a three-year contract. And they only offered him two, and he's playing some great footy. I want to know that the kind of situation. Are everything, though, aren't they? If, I mean, without the players, you have nothing. I don't. Did they? Every stone was 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 turned over to yep. make sure that player. Yep. Is going to stay at yep. the Crows, and that's probably my question. That's my question. So that's what I want to know. That's my first question mm. is I want to know why that situation occurred. Then I want to know on the coaching standpoint. Got to, is, oh, can I just say one thing? Because you know yep. the recruiters got those guys to the footy club yep. in the first place. Yep. So, so we can't just keep blaming the, the recruiters. Why don't they want to stay at the well, Adelaide footy club? So that's what we want to know. Yeah, yeah. So Eddie Betts has gone. Why, mm. why, why did Eddie go? There may be problems that we don't know about mm. in the public that are inside. And we go, okay, well, that was fair and reasonable. My next question would be why were those players being released? before you appointed the coach. So who was making the decision on players leaving when you hadn't appointed the coach? Now we know Nixie came in late, but again, I just want to know that. Then I'd like to see the Dunstall uh, Pavlik report. Yeah. I'd like to see yeah, what they said. I want to see that, Are actually. we following along yeah. what happened there? Um, as far as the camp went, the keeps resurfacing, it's been a gone. It's Not been interested. gone. So I see no time in wasting any money or any energies on let me find out what happened yeah. in the camp. It had nothing to do with Nixie. That's, yeah. So I guess I'm putting him in boxes. That one's a waste of time. These ones I need to know about. Okay, what are we going to do to improve? Now, if we're, we are kidding ourselves as a club if we think that the draft is going to save us. So in the next three years, we get four superstars out of the draft every year. Mm. You know, and I know as yeah. coaches, that a young kid is going to be in, inconsistent for the next three or four years. No question. There's no young kid yeah. that you're going to recruit in the draft that suddenly is going to take you to the promised mm. land. So I want to know, again, can we, what we need, be at the spine, be at the midfield, be at the, what does the club want? 
What does the coach want that we can get? Now, your problem is that you've got to attract them. Mm. Right now, yeah. it's not an attractive place to be. You're bottom of the ladder, not sure about the new coach coming in, not sure about the current coaches that are there. I want to know who have we got around. If I was trying to recruit you as a coach, mm. saying, Ando, we want you to come and join our coaching staff, what have I got to offer you? I know. So come and work with Matty Nix. We think he's going to be a dynamic young coach, but we're looking at Nixie right now. We're going, as in your spot, you're going, Man, he's not going to win on the board. Yeah. So on my resume, I'm coming because I want to improve myself as a coach. Eventually, I might want to be a head coach. It doesn't look good on my resume as an assistant coach that I've had three years and we haven't won anything or we haven't won much. So that's the first negative. So to get those coaches, you're going to have to pay some big money. Big dollars. And yeah. the Crows allegedly haven't wanted to part with big money. Or I can get a Neil Balm or type. It doesn't have to be Balmy, but someone where the, the people come in and go, oh, we can learn from him. Mm. So I'm happy to go because I know I can improve my skills as a coach learning from whoever that may be. So I think they're in a situation, if I was sitting in the seat going, who is the best guy that knows about coaches? Now, that might be Brad Gotch from Collingwood. Yeah. Who, yep. who was coaching the coaches at Collingwood yep. and had a great role there and is not working at the moment. So he's looking for some work. Let's get him in as a consultant and say, mate, we need you to tell us which coaches you think we should look at, mm. along with Greg Anderson and yep. Billy Smith. Okay, I've got three consultants over there. They're taking care of experts in that area. Okay, now I go over here and have some experts that can tell me about recruiting. Alan Stewart. I'd be talking yep. to him straight away saying, Stewie, get him back. did we get this wrong? Yeah. Did we get it right? Okay, if it's Matt Randell that we made a mistake in letting go, mm. if you think he's the best recruiting guy, then we need to get him yeah. back. So right now they're in a position where they're financial. Yep. So they can target, they need to get the best of the best. Don't get the coaches that aren't going to get signed up next year because they're getting squeezed out because of the reduction, mm. because they're getting squeezed out because they're not good enough. That's right. We want the best yeah. to get from where they are to improve. To help Nixie, they're going to have to put the best of the best around. Yeah, I agree with that. Look, I, That's how I, I look at it. I look at the, the team, and I, I just don't think the team's playing to benefit their style. Yep. And uh, that's where it's at. And you can see how flat they actually look. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really disappointing. Yeah. And, I, and I actually think there's yeah, they need some, uh, some fanta fantastic support. And I think Nixie's doing a great job. I think he's attacking the media beautifully. Hmm. You know, he's, he's telling us what we want to hear. Uh, but I think his support is is a little bit questionable, and uh, and I think yeah. there are people out there. Let's uh, let's let's rule them in. And so get, what get I do right like support. about the Crows right now is they're in the rockiest period they've ever been in, mm. and they seem to actually be pretty solid. Yeah. You know, if that had happened last year, there's there's players complaining, there's admin complaining, people. They seem to have straightened up the ship that's, in that area, and that's they're not why, yeah. they're not getting the reward that mm. they should. I think you know Andrew Fagan gets a lot of criticism. The business model is good. Yeah. They make a lot of money. Yeah. But the footy part's falling off. So yeah. maybe he needs someone next to him saying, well, mate, business side this, footy yeah. side that. Yeah. So, again, bring in some experts yeah. that can say, these are the areas that we need to yeah. improve in. I don't think they could bring in oh, one on. person that could do it. So but you know that's that how I go about it. Both clubs are very, very similar because both clubs, Adelaide clubs, uh, haven't beaten a side above them. <laughs> so they are very clever. Similar. Porter on top, so they haven't beaten anyone above them. The Crows haven't beaten anyone. I get to play. Very clever. Okay. <laughs> what a great segment. What a great segment. That is one Soup of your good ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have a quick chat about Game of the State, mate. I know we can quickly get to a break, but let's keep rolling because yeah. we're going along pretty good here. Uh, in the River Murray League, uh, gee whiz, mate, I, I should say too, Air Diffusion Agencies, we're actually in the offices yeah. of, of Billy, mate. They're pretty tidy, aren't they? Very, you know, they're a great sponsor of ours, Air Diffusion Agencies. How comfortably so, at the moment. The air conditioning is just mate. absolutely, I, absolutely actually, perfect. I asked Billy if I could pick up a snack pack on the way out, and he said no. <laughs> anyway, no. they are fantastic. The River Murray League. Uh, there was a cracking game between Manham and Jervis where the biggest margin was eight points at half time, but the other breaks were one point level with one point to win Jervis, which kept the Bloods in contention for a top two spot. So it's, the, it's going yeah. on. They're a good standard, having a good standard up there at the moment. And, uh, and, and my pie were too strong for Ramblers and Imperial, which is a very famous club, uh, gave Tal and Ben a bit of a touch up. By nearly 10 goals, 59 yeah, points. So, uh, yeah, so we've had to, you know, uh, 
bookends there, yep. thrashing and, and a really close, uh, close game. So that's great, great for the league. Yeah, some of yeah. it's happened in the Southern Footy League too. And we will oh, talk yeah. about that later yeah. on. But they, they've been really tight, the games in amongst the Southern Footy League. with some big blowouts yeah. there on the weekend. And we'll chat about that one a bit later, mate. The Adelaide Footy League, the Brighton Bombers have taken care of St Peter's by 27 points after beating PAC by 20 the previous week. So Bombers are unbeaten. This one's fantastic. I mean, look at Goody Saints are finding their way again. I like Goody Pain Saints. Pain of Nord, they beat Unleague Jets by, you know, 60 points. Bodie doing a Adelaide good job G- down there. He is. Serious coach yeah, for him. Yeah, yep. yeah, definitely. Uh, Adelaide Juni, uh, back on the winner's list. Uh, they've beaten Port Districts. was a big surprise. But it was right down to the wire. That was a, a super super game. And PAC got back uh, into the winning form. Uh, yeah, they, they doubled uh, Athelstan's score. But uh, Brighton Bummers, uh, five for five. And also uh, Henley. Henley Sharks in Division 2, uh, Doing five good. for five as well. Yeah. So uh, they've lost their game, and they've, they're actually playing the bottom side, which is Glenunga, Rockies right. team. Okay, the Southern Footy League, mate, Flagstaff Hill sit on top of the ladder, yeah. but there was an incident at their game between them and Port Nalunga involving some people on the boundary line saying some racist remarks to the players from Port Nalunga. Now, it's just inexcusable at the moment because there's such a massive focus on it. Mm. You know, we've got... Down on the knee, Black Lives Matter. Yeah. It's it's a time when it's we're just not talking about in our society anymore. Absolutely and, right, and so we should never have been. And apparently, there's a couple of young lads yeah. that, were, that were pretty abusive. But I'll, I'll take my hat off. The president of Flagstaff Hill, right, yep. and some of the players got down into the Cockle Divers locker rooms after. And I apologised, offered some support. And I know it's being investigated yeah. right now yeah. by the Southern Footy League, and, and we'll see what unfolds over the next week or so. But again. Get yourselves educated. Yeah, you you know, we, we've moved past yes, that. We've moved past All right, that. we need to get to a break. When we come back, of course, rumour or humour. Ando, segment brought to us by Air Diffusion Agencies. Ando, no show without Ando. Yeah, I love it. Gee whiz, what's next? <laughs> Stay with us. Still a bit more to come. All right, welcome back to Before the Bounce. Rumour or humour, Ando? I want to ask you this one. Bryce Gibbs will be captain coach of the Glenelg Footy Club 2021. Rumour or humour? Look, I think there's a bit of rumour and a bit of humour in that one. <laughs> so I'm, kind of, I'm sitting on the fence it's again. Just not like, for you, sort mate. of scenario. No, it's not a picket fence. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it probably would end up being. You know. But... Um, yeah, Bryce has been—it's been tough him coming back yeah, uh, you know, from Carlton. Very, very comfortable. Uh, he's, he's had a bit of a, a rocky road in the way of his performance with with the Crows. Um, you know, super player. You know, people were saying that he's not getting a fair go. Others saying his his form doesn't warrant it. So, I you know I would love to see Bryce go back to Glenelg and play two or three years, pick up a McGarry, you know, and really reap some rewards of his his sensational talent. Get the monkey off his back and just go out and play some footy. So, in saying that, I would say. Not to coach, though. Yeah, I, I, I can't <laughs> see how you get rid of the bloke that uh, won the Premiership last year and has got him in the finals this year. Not at all. I, I, he, he coached at Perby last, uh, last weekend. Uh, but, I, you know, I really, yeah, Bryce has had a tough couple of years and, and it'd be, you know, great to, you know, finish off uh, his last couple of years. Because I'd hate to see him, because of the expectations he's had on himself and, and uh, just his inconsistency with his performance, uh, just give the game away, you know, I would like to see him go back to the SNFL and even take his old man's uh, Ross's back pocket there for a couple of years. No, he could do that. Because he never, yeah. I mean, he never, his hand never moved, Ross, and he actually never moved out of that back pocket of about a, a 10 metre radius. Yeah. But right. he still picked up 35 kicks every so he week. He knew what he was doing. Oh my right. God, he was a good right. player. Okay, what about this one, mate? <laughs> Tommy Lynch and Tex uh, are, and they are the same age as Bryce Gibbs, selective thinking when playing the age card. Well, look, look I mean, there's, Texas, you know, at the moment, he's. I would be surprised, you know, if he doesn't really have a good thing about his uh, career next year. Um, he's he's been injured quite a bit over the last couple of years, and uh, his performance shows that as well. But you know, he's a super player when he, you know, when he uh, can get himself fit and. Um, but he's, you know, he's, you know, struggling again with his knee, as we know. He had an ankle. He's had wrists uh, over the last couple of years. So. I would be, you know, I would be surprised if uh, if he even goes again next year. I reckon he's got some. Uh, I reckon his body's sore. I, I reckon, reckon he's very he's bruised, sore. But I, I think more mentally, he's carried that club for a long I time. Agree. I agree. And the fact that he didn't play years. last week may indicate yeah. how massive a loss he is. Yeah. I'd like to see him go on next the year. Super player. But don't I, be I, wrong, I, but. Me, yeah. ankle, you've got a life after football. I'm not around him enough or around the uh, the way they're training and what mm. they're doing. But uh, And I said the same thing about Pavlik a few years ago mm. before he retired. I would have just kept Pavlik to play at home for Frio yeah. and no more road trips to extend his career. Yeah. I, I think with Tex, 
he still has a lot to offer as a player, and there's a presence about him. Yeah. yeah. That I, that it, unless Nixie sees it going a different way. Yeah, yeah. But I for 22 that, games, though, that's the question. I don't the know question. that he can play 22, but I think he's good enough to play enough games, mentally freshen him up, physically freshen him up, and I think he could be a massive it, injection you for know, them moving I'd, forward. I'd like to see that because, I, I, you know, it, it hasn't been part of our game. No. It has not part. been part of our game. That yep. We'll get Matthew Pavich, we'll get Tex just to play at Footy Park. Yep. Every second week, it, it, it probably give him a new lease of life because, like I'm saying, he is a, an unbelievable player. I'm not saying that at all, but he's, he's had a lot of injuries, which yes. then creates inconsistency with the team balance. Yeah. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not disputing and what you're saying. I, I think we cast players off too quickly, mm. and I, I think he offers more than just the player. Yeah. I, I take it back to Luke Hodge with Brisbane. You know, Hodge, had a modified program, played most games, but he missed a couple here and there. Yeah, okay. He's been so, really well. So yeah. it's kind of started. It's an NBA thing. Yes, You know, sitting in the NFL, so. but yeah. it hasn't come into our game yet. We haven't been able to embrace that yet, and I mm. think... He is someone that they need to hold yeah. on to for a whole range of reasons. I, I think th- Tommy Lynch is probably in the same boat. Where I think he's he's pretty courageous, Tommy. I he's think he carries a lot of injuries. Oh, I agree with uh, you. It was great to see him get so much of the ball last week, you know, yep. because it's, uh, you know, he's finally getting rewards. Uh, it looks like his body obviously felt very good, you know, yep. uh, the last, last game. Uh, but I think he's quite courageous in the way of, uh, I think he's battling over a few injuries over the last couple of years. Yeah. And I just think he thought, and of course the supporters do, your your experience is needed out in the field. Yeah, I just think there are a couple of guys I'd just be cautious about. You yeah. know, I, I, and I think he would be one as well. I, I reckon this year, again, reflecting back on the question you asked me, I'd like to know why they let Richard Douglas go. Because he, he is just a yeah. great team guy. I mean, yeah. he's playing terrific in the SNFL. If there was other reasons, fair enough. But I, when I've spoken to players before, they all wanted him to stay because mm. of that dynamic he brought in the leadership role. Yeah, which terrific is, bloke. Which is kind of what they're lacking yeah. right now. I so, know. again, that would be just... We made a mistake. Let's yeah. make sure we've learnt from it. Are there other areas we could improve on? Because it's not in our game just yet. No. Uh, so it doesn't mean we can't bring it. You were there. Yeah. You know, it so doesn't mean you can't bring it. Maybe you should go to the cars. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Chris Fagan might want to take all the credit for that one, mate. All right. We need to get on to this one, mate. We need to get on to this week. There's a couple of questions you could have asked me in rumour and humour, but now we need to get to the general in a league of your oh. own. The general segment, one where I get to shine, mate. We talked about Johnny Platten last week. Yep. I have gone for the number one player ever. It's got to be Russell Ebert. It is. You are correct, mate. (laughs) Played 391 games for Port Adelaide between 68 and 1985. 452 games in total, Mm. which is just amazing. In fact, I saw him the other day, Burton. He looks like he could still play. He looks fantastic. He plays tennis two or three times a week. This is what a lot of people didn't know about him. And I actually worked for Russ this year that he played. I was Mm. at Motley and Ebert Sports at the time. Russ agreed to play with North Melbourne in 1979. He has, uh, just through that period with North Melbourne, He recorded the most games in a debut season in the VFL. He had the most Brown medal, Brownlow medal votes for North Melbourne Melbourne, in that year. He had the most possessions for North Melbourne in that year. And if you talk to the guys that played with him, they said he was phenomenal. He was the best player they played with that year at North Melbourne. It just kind of got lost because we didn't have the exposure. But on top of that, mate, he's got four McGarry medals. He's got three (laughs) premierships. He coached Port Adelaide from 83 to 87. He coached Woodville 88 to 1990. He didn't get a premiership with them, but uh, he's an icon. He's an icon. Not not just of the Port Adelaide Footy Club, but I think of the SNFL and Atlee has a statue that sits outside Adelaide. And above all of that, He's a ripping bloke and does yeah. some wonderful things for charity. Still works for the footy club today yeah. and still has an aura about him. He's got an aura about him. Can I, can I say that uh, I loved Port Adelaide as a kid growing up. We, we, we actually lived probably eight houses away from Albert and Oval. But then it was a stage that I barracked for Russ Lee, but then Port Adelaide. So yep. as, a, as, a, you know, as a you know 12-year-old to you know probably 15-year-old, as a vulnerable kid to just love footy and, and slept with the footy and you know just loved everything about Port Adelaide as well, you know, he was my absolute idol. He was bigger than Superman or Batman <laughs> together. There's no question about yeah, that. He played a bit like it both times. So what about, have you ever seen a player other than Russ? Because you know when you talk about great players, yeah. they have something unique about yeah. them. The handball. The handball. Head. Uh, yeah. oh, did you ever see another player do it? The, no, no, no. Ever. No. Can I just say, I'm at, I'm at, uh, I was a guest at Port Adelaide. I was 15 years old and I'm sitting in the grandstand. We're playing Central Districts. Now, the ball was kicked along the ground. It was like socket off the ground. It's flying along the ground. Russell's put that big mid out, and he's just gone bang. 
He's kept his bangs low to the ground. A central player has come towards him. He's gone over the top, just one hand. He's looked <laughs> someone else come. He's balled him. He's gone around him and he's kicked it, got spoiled out of bounds. We're all standing on the ground clapping. It was the best thing I've ever seen on football, by my either, by the way. Then the umpire, this is the same play. The umpire's thrown in. The ruckman are really, you know, shoulder to shoulder. And they try. Russell has come over. He's taken the ball that far before it hits the ruckman's hands. He's taken a bounce. He's kicked the pocket. Uh, he's kicked the goal in the pocket right in front of the grandstand. I was, I'm nearly in tears. <laughs> I'm nearly in tears. And when I tell that story, especially, you know, from around people at Port Adelaide, right. my age and older, they yeah. say, we know of that game. Yeah. We know of we that. Remember. Of, we yeah. remember. He, it was, he brought some great magic. Yeah. He was a great coach. I loved him as a coach. I mean, he was probably, uh, um, you know, he brought, you know, Wayne Marnie to the club, uh, Dar- Daryl Borlas, Darren Smith, uh, Hines, he got back Greg Phillips, he got back Abernathy, he recruited Scotty Hodges. So he really formed, you know, the, the club to really go that next step, uh, which John Carl took and, and done beautifully uh, with those players. But it was just a really lovely combination of what Russell had built uh, then taken and Jack sort of uh, and the club obviously re- re- uh, yep. reaped the rewards of what, what brilliance uh, of uh, Russell he was recruiting and just rebuilding that team after Brian Cunningham sort of Tim Evans Amy Paul Pleasia Ivan yeah, Eckerman Carl Fregamini you know the list just goes on of players yep. that lost left. we left between sort of 81 and 82 Russell really had to start with a, of a new slate sure. he's done a great job he was yeah. a great coach but yeah. wow. well, you know everyone's got some great Russell Ebert stories My haven't God. they I mean because there were so many of them and, and yeah. you know I remember talking to Neil Curley about Russell asking him you know because he had to coach against mm. him how he went about it he said look probably the only bloke that was able to contain him a little bit mm. was Peter Marker he said okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that, that other than that, he thought Russell had the better of yeah. just about everyone else. I never else. liked Peter Marker because no. of that fact that he was probably the one who couldn't contain yep. or some at times beat Russell Ebert. You yep. know, him and Paul Bagshaw were a fair, oh, what a great match. You know, great yep. match. But Peter Marker, for some reason, just, just was seemed to, to be able to contain him and, and do some, some brilliant stuff because he was a brilliant player as well. But on that North Melbourne stuff, I actually watched, uh, there was a, something on Facebook. It was yep. only the last sort of seven or eight minutes from, on, a, on a Sunday afternoon. We've, you know, we're going out and it's North Melbourne and play Collingwood and here's the highlights of the game and there was only about five or six minutes of play Russell would have had to have got six or seven possessions uh, he was just absolutely awesome just just you know as strong but there are a lot of strong players around him as well yeah. and it was uh, he, he was just fantastic and I, know on the, I know on the strength side the boys used to say used to say what was Russell like in the weight room mm-hmm. They'll say no one would be in the weight room when Russ was in the weight room. No, it was too embarrassing. It's too embarrassing. So we're just exactly. Russ look there. He's, he finished yet? No, he's still got a couple of sets. You're right, Russ. He goes, give us five and oh, we can use the weights and I'll take everything off the bar as well. So he's got the full bar and he's using them as dumbbells. Yeah. Hey, it's time for us to go. Hope you've enjoyed the show, everybody. We'll look forward to your company next week. Bye for now.